here with uh, head coach John Cooper after a 76-70 win over Austin Peay at the Tarkin Sports Classic. Coach, your opening statement. Well, obviously we led for, I mean, pretty much the entire game, I think, except for about three or four minutes of the game. Uh, unfortunately for us, we, we almost just had to hold on um, down the stretch. Um, but but happy um, for our guys because I, I thought – from the aspect of competing, that they competed the entire game. And it was important for us to come out um, to start the game, to have energy, um, uh, especially after the, the tough loss last night uh, and being able to um, rebound from that. Um, and I thought we did a good job of that. And one thing about Austin P is I watched him come from 16 down yesterday. They never, ever lay on the mat. Um, last year, they beat my old place, my old assistant, Dana Ford. They came down from 17 to beat Tennessee State. So I sort of follow Coach Luce because he was really good to me when I was in the league there. And so it's the one thing you know is that they're going to continue to um, fight and come back. And then, of course, uh, they started hitting threes. Um, and we fouled a three-point shooter. Um, a lot of things happened. And, and then, of course, um, you know, Michael Weathers, man, he's – He's been pretty, pretty good, and you know he has his moments in games, and he's learning. And, and especially now, late in the game, and the team goes to two-two-one, and things like that. Those are things that he's having to make adjustments for. But you know, you look at the uh, stat sheet, and he's really um, stuffing it. Um, nine rebounds, and a lot of that can also be attributed to the other guys boxing their men off and allowing him to come free and rebound. Um, one of the things I really like is when you look at the stat sheet, we have four guys that were in double figures. I thought Marcus Weathers was terrific tonight. Um, rebounding the ball, activity, um, just a knack for going to get balls. And I mean, I swear when he takes his arms up to go get a ball, it looks like they go all the way up to the ceiling. You know, he's just got length. Um, and Ben, ben Kazee hasn't played much at all. He hadn't played. It's his first time I think he's played. Um, here in the tournament, and he comes up with a big time block um, and activity. And so, you know, at one point, I think I looked down on the court, and there were three freshmen out there down the stretch of the game. Um, radio was teasing me. There was one play, it went from Weathers to Weathers um, to Harper, and we get a foul. And uh, three freshmen, um, I thought Milos came in, helped us on the boards, did a good job, took two shots, didn't make them, but did a good job. And so, you know, and and Bruno hasn't gotten his opportunity yet, and Bruno's going to be able to help us. It's just it is what it is. Um, but, you know, we're growing. Um, we've got to continue to get better. We've got to figure out a way to be able to come back and execute tomorrow um, when we could be a little bit fatigued. But guess what? Northern Kentucky's got to do the same thing that we have to. Open up for questions. Michael scored 10 of your last 12 points, including nine straight. Where does that maturity uh, come from, if maturity is the right word? Well, you know, I said it out in radio, and I think one of the things that you have to say about him is he doesn't have fear because he could very well have tucked his tail after the right State game when he missed a lot of shots in close and down the stretch. But, you know, um, he sort of just keeps playing. And, and there are times out there you're like, no, 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 no. Oh, good, good, good move, Michael. Good move. Um, but, you know, he, he presents challenges because the one thing about it, he's one of three today, but he shoots it well enough to where you really do have to honor it. And he's going to – and part of his growth is he's going to have to make adjustments to how um, teams are guarding him. Um, and what's interesting is right now, early in the game, that's usually when he has the biggest struggle of making that quick adjustment to how teams are guarding him and what they're doing. I think he's starting to discover that if he can spit the ball out when he gets in the paint, um, it's really going to open up some things for him. And poor kid, I think he was tired down the stretch, but yeah, like, okay, we need you in there. <laughs> you had a quick turnaround from last night to today, relatively quick anyway. Right. Did you have a chance to go over with the team anything, uh, you know, some stuff to look for, or was there any particular thing that you wanted or individual you wanted to to work on or one way or another? For? Uh, Austin P. 
Austin P. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, we we had a um, walk through this morning, and you know, you just want to familiarize them um, with some of the things you're going to see. I mean, we knew Robinson's your guy, you know, and and what was he tonight? He was he was three of eight. Is that right? He was three of eighteen from the field. You know, he didn't necessarily have his best game. Uh, Kenny Jones has been really, really good for them. He's got an unbelievable motor. Um, thanks, good, thank goodness he fouled out because he had 16 and 11. And so, um, yeah, but we had an opportunity just to walk through a few things. Um, I, I can't give this team everything. This isn't that – they're not ready for that yet. Um, and so we, we pick and choose what we give them so that they at least can grasp that concept of it. Um, what we're trying to get across, hopefully the most important things. But we had some breakdowns here even down the stretch. We had, I think, Robinson gets a wide open three. We don't switch. We have two juniors. Should have been a switch. We don't switch. That that can't happen. Um, but, you know, we have some breakdowns in games that, I mean, I don't, you know, we just we need to play more. You know, guys need to go through it. But And, and trust me, I see them. Um, but I also know that, there's some things they do that hadn't seen done. You know, they're good. So it's a give and take. You talked about the other guys contributing off the bench. I thought you did a, a really good job of managing their substitutions to get guys like Haruna and Weathers and Jake Wright a really good wrestler. Well, you know, I I think uh, the first time when I subbed him, I think we went with Milos, Weathers, and Zach McCormick, and we got all three out. And, of course, typically, if that hasn't happened, because I don't know if I've taken all three out like that before. You, they don't. They were fine, but it's sort of like, and it's one of the things I told them, understand that, you know, this is three games back-to-back. -back. Um, what we're playing for, we're growing some other kids. Um, and I like when Milos and Zach are out there with both, both of them can handle, and I think it helps them both. Um, but then, you know, we got positive minutes. And so that really helps. And, you know, Marcus is going and eating glass on the offensive end. And, you know, a lot of times the best time to, you know, try to give Michael some rest is early in the game. Um, so you'll have him down the stretch. But it, it ended up working out well. We are able to extend our bench. And I wanted to get Ben in tonight. And Ben, you know, says he played a minute. And as I told him, it's a start. You know, that that's it. It's a start. And, you know, he, he got two quick fouls, but he also made a play um, to help us, and that's what you're looking for. But if you go back to Marcus, Marcus wasn't really playing, and I think he had the one game where he played a little. He played well, and that's what you look for. And now you see confidence in him, and he's out there, and, and he looks relaxed. And I think the best thing that he does is he, he stays within himself and what he can do. And... I think he's got a chance to be a terrific defender. I really do. He's just so big and long. Knowing fatigue will be a factor tomorrow, what are you telling the team? <laughs> Get some rest. <laughs> I mean, you know, hey, they listen, they come to us and they've played AAU basketball where they play 70-something games in a summer. Um, so, you know, I always remember as a player that, you know, I, I could take playing the games. It's the practice that used to get on your nerves. So, um, you know, they're curfew. They got a curfew tonight, get some food. Um, if you And typically what I do in the locker rooms, I go down the uh, minutes played. And every single guy with the exception of Ben that played has to do an ice bath, mandatory. So they're doing ice baths um, to get their bodies rejuvenated. And, of course, you know, they hate those, but it's good for them. And, and, you know, try to do those things and, and, and get them ready to play. Uh, the tough part is is that we have the later game, but it's an earlier game tomorrow, and they'll have to get up. And we've got to try to help them get prepared because Northern does some things that we hadn't seen yet this year. So it'll, it'll be a tough part for us to get them ready. Any more questions? That's it. Thanks, guys. Thank Appreciate you. it. Here you go. All right. Questions for Michael? Michael, uh, you scored 10 of your team's last 12 points, including a run of nine straight there. Um, what was going through your mind? Did you, did you feel like an urge to just, like, I don't know, take over the game or what? Uh, my my moment, I mean, my uh, mindset during the last few minutes of the game is always take over, always be aggressive. My coaches tell me stay aggressive and get to the lane and create for others. But uh, I saw them stepping up late and everything, so I just kept attacking the rim. <coughs> 
Um, I could see at the very end they were, it looked like they were trying to keep the ball away from you uh, as far as on the press and that, you know, to just keep you from getting it, deny mm -hmm. that and everything. Uh, you take great pride in being able to, uh, you know, handle the ball and, and, and keep it moving? Uh, yeah, my uh, as my position as a point guard, I have to handle the ball. So my team needs me to run offense and do this and do that and be a, a general for the team. So I take pride in it. Um, when they pushed back, kind of in the second half uh, later in the game, how much was a factor? How much um, was fatigue a factor, and how much was just kind of you guys not like sticking to your game plan? Uh, fatigue hit us around the eight-minute mark while they were making that run. Uh, I think that settled in too much for us. Um, but uh, our coaches uh, told us you got to fight through fatigue. You're gonna have to fight f through fatigue in later games. So uh, as long as we as long as we can push through that, then we'll be good throughout the season. Um, at one point down the stretch there, Rod was trying to throw the inbounds pass and he committed the traveling yeah. violation there. And you literally yelled at him, just give me the ball. Do you feel bad about that? Um, I, was, I felt like I was wide open, so I don't, I don't feel bad for yelling at I, I do feel uh, bad for saying it really loud uh, so the crowd can hear me. So. <laughs> well, I'm sitting right there. So. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? All right, I think we're good. Thank you.